My name's Susan Barrett and I'd like to tell you about my book published in April 2020, The Housekeepers. In this time of lockdown and self-isolation, The Housekeepers looks back at the lives of two women who at a distance of 60 years and unknown to each other find themselves together, apart, shut up in the same house. It's 1955 and Celia is an unhappily married 19-year-old. Abby takes on the neglected Georgian house as a restoration project in 2015. Told in counterpoint, their stories at times converge, sometimes oppose. The third character in the mix is the house itself, its rooms seeming to echo with the lives and times of residents long past as well as those to come. Despite some haunting and gothic horror, this is not a gloomy book. There are jokes, jeopardy and misdirection, as well as, and in the end, hope. And the dark spell that seems to have been cast over babies born and unborn here will be lifted by a generous act the gift of one generation of women to the next. Our fresh start would have had a different ending, if only we'd listened to the warning bells. Not that colourful history appeared anywhere in the estate agent's coded details. Translation, the scene of acts of unspeakable violence, baroque death or nasty murder, resulting in permanent and awful haunting. Massive potential did though, so the place was a dump. But by then we'd seen inside enough ruinously expensive holes to let that pass. We're accustomed to even occasionally entertained by the simple hacks owners came up with to camouflage their bad taste and worse housekeeping. In one place described as characterful, to divert attention from decades of damp, someone had thoughtfully set dressed the breakfast table with plastic croissants, gingham napkins, fake flowers and a vase. Never mind the only places Bill and I had ever owned were new builds, pleasant properties, best described in just the three words, sterile, white and box. Or that our idea of DIY was changing the light bulbs ourselves. Of course we could tackle a real doer-upper. Panic to action by the bullish London property market of 2015, and because we really needed somewhere to live, we booked an immediate appointment to view. How to describe the Celia of 1955, the year life went bung. Born just before the war, comfortably off in the home counties, as was normal for your times and class, you're a bit of a prig and a snob. At 19, I don't think I like you much. But should remember it is because you are young that what you do and say can still make me cringe. I want to reach across the years to give you a hug or a shake. I might feel sorry for you. You suffer, I know, but your sadness exasperates me. After days spent crying into teacups, when you do finally get out of bed, it's to drift about the living room. Just like any other dust moat, trapped in the shafts of the low autumn sun, you revolve round and around within the thickets of two familiar furniture. The fern stands and the footstools and the fire screens and the many little drop leaf tables you've come home to. Eyes on your feet as they pass and repass down narrow trails that lead nowhere. <laughs>